Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and yes, I already announced it. I shared a good amount of pictures on my socials. But today I'm feeling a little bit, I don't know, cocky. <laughs> and starting a solo playthrough of Crusader Kings, the board game. Lead your dynasty to triumph. This is really not the typical, let's say, solo game. It's really a multiplayer game with kind of a little bit dudes on a map. Yes, it's kind of based on Crusader Kings 2, the video game. You might see some similarities, but it's not really the same little game. But still, uh, it's basically been a free league and Paradox, they had their hands in this board game here. I'm really a big fan of the multiplayer experience, but there is a solo mode. The solo mode were already part of the very first rules um, edition that came out, I don't know, a year or two later. They published a version 1.1 or so where they have cleaned up a little bit of the things. Not really major stuff. Some things have been a little bit rebalanced and changed. But I think um, it made a lot of things much clearer. And this is also true for the solo mode. I have never played the solo mode before. So I'm really as curious as you are. And I'm not even sure if I will play it to the bitter end. You really have to see how things go. Ultimately, we are playing until we either make it through through a three full eras or if one of the players triggers the end game by becoming the king of Jerusalem. Not necessarily that this player would win but typically you are hopefully winning that way because otherwise there is no point for you to really end the game prematurely in any way. I believe I have seen both and this game is basically very th scenario driven and I'm really playing the first one first scenarios which is king of all Jerusalem or so. All the other scenarios they have slightly different starting positions for all of those families out here and what tokens there are out and again where a castle is and whatnot but again I think they're not really too different um, in respect I think there are some that introduce a little bit of minor rule tricks here and there but again ultimately it's typically a change in setup but in theory you're totally fine just playing King of Jerusalem honestly. I also decided not to go for a five player game. I'm playing only quote unquote a four player game because this is just enough in order to really appreciate the game, enjoy the game. Typically in a multiplayer game I would always go for a five player experience. In this case we are simply not playing with England. That's basically what you did. Completely out of bounds. We cannot go there and anything that refers to England is simply not present. And yeah I'm playing against three different bots that is and I ended up uh, as the Germanic player here. So I usually end up playing France for whatever reason because I'm the blue player, but France against three um, different I AIs which also behave a little bit differently and that I come to that in a second could be really bad because again you're in the middle of things. Uh, in a five play game that's even worse but that's also the reason why in this scenario France for example starts with five countries or five regions that they control and a castle. All the other as you can see are not starting with any castles on the board but yeah that's really because France is in the middle of everything. But yeah again I'm ultimately here on the right hand side and speaking about the other let's call it um, Factions. We have, I think this is Italy, right? Um, Casa da Alta Vila uh, with Roger the Second. I'm not 100% sure if I have chosen the right um, king for this very specific scenario, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter which king you are. The scenario tells you which of those trade tokens you're putting into each of those decks. And this is really a mechanic I do enjoy a big deal in this game. You're not rolling dice, you are pulling chits out of the back and you are kind of in control of how this back will look like in the end. But again, apart from that, it's, it really doesn't matter who we have. The steward is, I believe, a starting, let's call it development, or in this case, a counselor, which you get from the scenario. And the longbow is a development card that you get um, because yeah, of the AI rules. And Italy is the aggressive player, the Ferox player. Again, I printed this out myself just to have it handy in front of me. They're nicely printed in the rules. And they start basically with a longbow, but you also still keep on to the starting development cards of, yeah, as per the scenario rules. That's Italy with Roger the second. And yeah, obviously they're controlling most parts of Italy. Then we have the house of Capet, Louis um, the ninth, the saint. I'm also not quite sure if that's the right one, but again, doesn't also really matter too much. Again, I have these trade tokens in here and I, I don't want to walk you through. So they are starting, I don't know, let, let me pull out two of those tokens. They all have four, so he's humble. 
um, which is good and bad, and he's lustful, which is also good and bad. Similar to Crusader Kings, the video game, all of those, let's say, traits can come in handy, but they can also be detrimental. Really depends a little bit on the situation. They are starting with the Chancellor and they're also starting with the Steward. And yeah, as I already showed you, they are controlling majority of Francia or the France region. And last but not least, we have the Imperium Empire, uh, Sancho IV of Pamplona. Um, he starts the game with a Spy Master and a Blade Armor, so they are the defensive, um, I think, tactics card we have. I think uh, I should have told you France is the developer, by the way. So they're heavily into building and whatnot. And yeah, obviously he's starting down here in the Iberian Peninsula. What I just showed you, these very small little boards, is only because this game can be a table hawk, especially when you played multiplayer. The normal player board that each player gets is this. So you have a lot of spaces for developments and counselor cards for your king, for your spouse, for your siblings, for your children. You name it, all your politics, who you are in pact with, who you have a castle spelly against, where you are at war with. Um, and basically for your character deck here. Again, I can't do this for this solo playthrough here. It's simply, I don't have the table space down here in my little basement. But again, that's us. That's Heinrich the fifth or Heinrich the fifth. And yeah, I think, yeah, I have not put them in. These are basically our starting traits. So we are cruel, which again can be a good thing. These are these so-called critical traits. That's why you see these symbols here, though they help you on one hand, but they are basically hindering you on the other hand. Really depends on which test you are taking. Similarly for ambitious, which helps you when you are building, so that's typically a good thing, but for all other tests, it's a red token. Red is typically a failure. Maybe I should be clear on that. But if you're doing a building action, for example, being ambitious is helpful. So in this case, it would be a good one. So that's good. Otherwise, we are cultivated and we are clever. Isn't that lovely? So those tokens go into our little trade back here. Again, this will grow over time. And we are starting the game with a court physician who can be particularly useful when it comes down when you are getting sick and help during difficult childbirth. So yeah, that's definitely a thing in this game. These are the medieval times. So yeah, obviously bad things can happen here. So having a court physician makes you a little bit more at ease when it comes down to childbirth. And that's what you really need to do. You don't want to end up in a situation where you don't have an heir to the throne because then really terrible terrible things will happen. I have decided um, to be the starting player in this scenario here. I think the rules say the player who last played Crusader Kings will be first. That's obviously me against me. So in this case, again, as I have no clue how this game goes solo, I simply will go first. And this will change depending a little bit on who is going for um, the Crusade action later on doing around. The first thing that you do during a so-called era, and again we are playing up to three eras, is to prepare your action cards. Of course this is different if you're playing now as a player or as an NI player. As for the AI, those tactics rules basically tell you which cards each of those players are drawing. So let's take Italy here for example. They're drawing one realm, tree intrigue, three war, zero tax cards in there. No, no, none of these are playing tax cards because they are supposed to have unlimited funds to some extent, which is why they do not really care about tax card. And in this case, they will draw a crusade card. For us, we do have some options and those options are laid out here. So we are drawing either one to two crusade cards. We have to draw at least one. Zero to two text cards, zero to three war cards, zero to three entry cards, and zero to three realm cards. We will draw eight cards, I believe, um, so that we get some choices. We will always play two cards per round. Um, so given now, or based on our, let's call it strategy, uh, this is really a very messy and chaotic game, by the way. It depends now where you are leaning towards to. So having some flexibility in crusade cards, cards can be great, but 
typically you have other things to do as well in respect to intrigue and or a war or a tax where you really need to have some money early on. So really a lot of things to decide relatively early on in this game. Maybe let's have a quick look at what it is you are scoring victory points. Basically either when the end game is being triggered again, either after three completed eras or if someone claimed the king of Jerusalem. You get one victory point for each territory you are controlling. Um, these horsemen here, they are not soldiers in any way. They are simply show you that, hey, you are in control. Doesn't mean that it's mobilized in any way. It just shows you, hey, this is mine. Yeah, that's definitely overstatement here i get it so this would have been five points for the blue player if this would be the end game there are eight horses for each of the players in the box which means you cannot score more than eight points from the countries that you are controlling on top of that you can score one point for each of those achievements that's a builder i think this depends on how many if you have the i have to check it i think the builder is three castles in territories under their control exactly then we have the inventor this is um, when you have four development cards on your display and development cards can be either inventions or counselors doesn't really matter which one then there is the crusader given to the first player to have two dynasty shields on the crusade track and the last but not least we have the king of jerusalem given to the player who reaches the 10th and final position on the crusade track this immediately ends the game and really immediately ends the game you can take these achievements away so let's say i have the inventor with four of those development cards another player claims the fifth invention they are taking this victory point away from me so this is obviously not a very high scoring game and is i think the only let's call it complaint i have about it i think there are some house rules out there and some suggestions so what we are doing is actually we definitely also count the amount of uh, money at the end of the game for another victory point so this already changes things quite a bit as the ai doesn't really score or collect any income any any money in this case we will have to get back to the basic um, achievements here um, and I, I really also don't know how this would maybe change the balance or so I don't know so that's basically what we are trying to get and looking around I think getting the inventor as everyone already starts with two might be difficult mm, so we may want to go for either the crusader or for the builder early on so that's at least something. But also here, France already has one territory under their control that has a castle. So also they are in the lead in that regard. So definitely something to keep in mind. Okay, let's think about it. So I think we are going with two text cards here. I think that is clear. I think we are only going for one. Maybe we should go with two, actually. Maybe we should go with two. Let's let's try that. Let's go heavy on Crusade. So that's already four out of eight cards. And we are not allowed to look, by the way, um, to say, oh, let's draw one card. If I'm happy, I stop drawing. No, you have to make that call before you're flipping those cards over, which I think makes sense to a certain... And then I will come to that. So we have four more cards. And definitely go one, one... And one, and maybe you want to go for a second realm card first, because with the realm cards, you're typically building stuff. But I think in this case, and yeah, we had two text cards here, and two text cards might go nicely together with a second realm card. So yeah, let's do that, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is our card pool. I will assemble the deck for all the other players, quote unquote, off camera and then i think we can actually start yeah, playing the game okay i have prepared all the decks again we are simply shuffling the decks for the ai players here again i get to choose they are simply flipping over the topmost card and do what the some kind of word for tells them what they need to do then we play um basically three rounds in an era and each round consists of two um basically yeah cards that you are playing so we are playing two turns basically around each round um, and again we are playing three rounds in each era starts with a dynasty phase each player in play order make one attempt to marry his king a sibling or a child and may then grant or revoke any number of dukes and duchess titles dukes and duchess we can ignore for now because we don't have any siblings or children out there so, but what we definitely do want to do is to marry and we do that in player order we are the starting player and looking at our close vicinity here we see lovely Gertrude in Hungary 
who comes with a green trade token. She's kind, which is again another critical trade token, which can help us in, I think, when you do... Um, a crusade i believe but it's a little bit detrimental or getting in the way if you're doing war which kind of makes sense you can basically marry everyone that's currently out here on the board so i could also decide no i don't want gertrude for whatever reason i want baton here which maybe gives me some help here when i'm fighting something adjacent to that so that's also something that you have to keep in mind because then you are pretty much entering a pact with that territory here with that country and then next you have to check if you are going for a green token. So if she comes, in this case, I have a male king, so I have to marry a female. These, these are the middle ages after all. So if I go for the imbecile <laughs> Barton, I get her for free, basically, because yeah, the family wants to get rid of her because of her being an imbecile. And this is really not political. I really apologize. But yeah, that's the game. If you have played Crusader Kings, two or three then you definitely know what I'm talking about. So I can basically marry her for free. I would put the trade token into my bag because again she will be the spouse of uh, my king and the wife really has an impact on my dynasty basically so that's why you're putting it in. Everyone else like siblings or children they keep their tokens next to them and if they then become king or queen for example then you would also add this to, to your dynasty pack. You can also decide, again, this will happen sooner or later, that there aren't any more um, yeah, neutral territories out here. And these are all neutral territories. Maybe I should have uh, mentioned that. Then you can also always marry pretty much from your own deck. So we'd flip over the topmost card. You would draw a random trade token from deck. So there's always risk, um, but could, could go your way. And then you would marry this way. On the other hand, this is definitely where the game shines in respect to yeah, treaties, in respect to table talk, in respect to negotiations. You can always, of course, marry from another dynasty, which would then also create a pack with your um, yeah, fellow players, for example. Right now, that's not possible. We all only have our kings out there so that's not gonna happen but that's also another possibilities and the rules for the AI is to tell you how to deal with that but honestly I do think I do want to marry Gertrude now she comes with a green trade token which means I have to go for a trade check so it's not for free because yeah the family knows what they have with her so I think they're not giving her away too easily so I have to really make an effort to marry her in order to go for a trade check we are taking our little bag we know Oh, it's two times green and we can look at your trade back at any time what's in there so to make a more informed decision let's have a quick look at it again so cultivators so of these are basically helpful um, and these are pretty much detrimental to that so they're not helping us so this would be against but there are no um, critical trades for a marriage check that's at least something so we it's basically a green or a red token that we had drawn we're getting one draw always for free we only need one success so if you make one draw and we're drawing a green token we are going but you can always pay for extra draws and you can pay basically up to two times more than you need uh, successes for. So I need one success so I could pay two gold coins in order to get two extra draws. In the multiplayer game, players could then afterwards pay against you to reduce that amount of draws again. That, But that's then for a two for one. In this case, for the solo game, that's the AI. What's never doing this? I can do that against the AI, but they are not doing this against me and not to each other. And oh, I guess, oh, wait a second. Mm, I just noticed something. For whatever reason, I did not see that Hedwig is up here. Uh, so we need to, that's another country, actually, which neutral territory, which I didn't draw a card for. Hopefully I haven't missed others too. So we are drawing another random token from the back and she is cruel, which is again, a critical token, which could help me in certain circumstances. But no, I think this doesn't really change a thing. But then I do think I will pay, hmm, I think I will pay one coin in order to get an extra draw. And you have to pay before you're drawing, obviously. So again, it's a 50-50 chance for the first token and then it even increases dramatically. So I think that's what we are going to do. So we are putting these tokens back. So I'm making my marriage attempt. I have paid one gold doubloon, one coin out of the five I started the game with. So here we do 
our very first draw of the day. So that's basically a die roll. And awesome. We are so cultivated and so hands uh, so so nice and, and lovely that they are absolutely excited to give a lovely Gertrude to us. Again, she's the spouse of our king, which means her token, the kind one automatically goes into the trade bag and after each trade check all of the tokens that you use go back in there so there is no um, situation like oh I have already pulled out two red tokens from a previous trade so it's not a deck builder where you keep drawing until the back is empty no for each trade tag you're pretty much reseeding your back but that's great we were able to marry lovely Gertrude so we are placing her next to our king we have to take one of our crests and place it into Hungary. First of all, Hungary will now support us if we are whatever invading uh, adjacent territory and we can pretty much move into Hungary also for free. So if you want to take it over, first of all we have to mobilize of course um, and then we can move in. And I think I already made a terrible mistake quite honestly but again as I already have quote unquote rolled some dice I will not repair that. I think I should have taken two war cards. It's been quite a while since I played this game. So that was our marriage attempt um, and it was a successful one. So that's cool, which means we can now also get uh, a child basically with one of the um, event cards from the other players. And um, these kind of events are typically tr um, triggered through other players, not through our cards, but through events from other players. It says then whatever the next player, for example, can get a child, but I will come to that when we are getting into this phase. So that was our marriage attempt. Again, I'm not assigning any Duke or Duchess in this case, because again, I have no child's, uh, children or siblings. So in this case, we are moving over to Italy and I will only show this once. Um, these are really some of the things I will have to go through off camera because otherwise it will be painfully slow to watch. Okay, that's their, what they're doing for their Mary step. Marry the king and then the children as soon as possible, focusing on strong, cruel and sword master. If none are available, marry into the closest territory regardless of trade. Never marry other players' children or siblings. Never accept marriage proposals from other players unless they pay five gold for for a child with a red trade and seven gold or more for a child with a green trade. So again, yeah, they don't have any children right now or siblings, so, but they're really hard to convince to give any of their children or siblings to us. But okay, they are going for strong, cruel and sword master. And in fact, down here, we have a lovely Margarita. Um, she is strong and she's also next to Italy. But from what I understand from the solo rules, um, Italy would gain any of those. And it's also the right, um, of course, <laughs> the right gender. I think that's also something that's really important to mention in this case. So they are making a trade track. They always get one extra trade row. I can now also start paying two in order to yeah more or less work against it but i think let's not do that at this point and we already spent one coin and money can be tied at times so i think they're simply drawing again they're drawing two tokens out of the back and there is a slight chance that they are not successful here in this case so that's definitely not good enough so because uh, italy is so deceitful in this case or the king is roger the second so where yeah, margarita is not convinced or the family is not convinced so they're taking their second token and yeah but they are clever enough it seems to uh, convince them so again we are putting this back the strong token goes into this back so this is another green token into the back of italy and then we are placing the token next to that and oh where am i here are my pack tokens so they have a pact with sicily it seems over to france and louis the ninth would go for an ambitious one but Sancho, yeah, not so much. That's not going to happen. The other, I think, trade they're aiming for is honest. And I think we don't have any honest characters out here right now. And it also doesn't say that they are going for the closest territory regardless of trade which means i think in this case as there is no one available i think this is now the first instance where we are going for a random character from that trade deck that would be my take they're the developers so i guess they are marrying a random character from that deck and that's jehan okay um this is the right gender right away um she gets unfortunately a random trade token now a little bit of a glare here, apologies for that. And Jehan is, oh, <laughs> it's even perfect for him, yeah. He wanted to go for honest characters. So yeah, I think that's pretty 
perfect actually. So we're putting this into the trade back of France and then we are moving over to Iberia. But actually, I think they do have to do a trade check here though. Um, even if it's a random one. Yeah, 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 I think I think it's I think they're aware. I think it's the same thing. So we are drawing this before we are putting in the honest token. So he's gluttonous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and yeah, okay. Because he's humble and gluttonous, I think this convinced the honest <laughs> chicken over to us. Sorry for that. But again, playing this for the first time alone here. And then now we are finally moving over to Spain or Iberia. And because Iberian is a defensive player, they want to actively marry into other players families where they are at war with or who have a castle spell against because this would then erase the castle spell and would create a pact instead and by the way you don't have to give each of those different um tactics you can really roll that randomly so you could really whatever end up with three of the same tactics out there so three times the defensive families for example i decided really to go for different ones just to show you things uh, let's say how they unfold but again that's that's totally up to you um the other alternative is they will go for neutral territories but only with green tokens out there and right now there aren't any females with green tokens anymore giscard and rudolf are the only ones who have green tokens but again it's the middle ages so that's not officially allowed here so they will also go for a random token from their character deck but again this also means they have to go for a trade tag first so let's see that's the first one and because he's so generous whatever throwing gifts left and right he was able to marry so let's see who we get yeah and here we have constanza lovely constanza we are drawing a random trade token for her too and oh she is deceitful okay this also goes into the trade back of the iberian player okay that's already a bad start for them but okay that's life i'm pretty sure they will be fine after it's really not the end of the world but it really seems that i'm the only one who actively married into neutral territory which i think kind of relieves me now a little bit that i don't have more war cards but that's basically the dynasty phase. Up next, we are going into the plotting phase though, but that's actually only important for us. Secretly decide which two action cards from your hand to play this round. Place them face down in front of you with the card we played first on top. So I really have to make this commitment for this first round. We are playing three rounds. So out of the eight cards we have drawn, we will play six cards over this era. And I have to make an informed decision now out of our, let's say eight cards here on which to play first and which to play second. So I cannot play both cards out and then choose. No, I have to then really play them in order. And looking at the current situation, I think I want to start with sword fighting. Um, this goes to the other. One of the next player's children develops unusual skill at sword play. The child gets the sword master trait in addition to existing traits. And playing this event now at this point in time while I was starting player, none of the other players has a child yet. I think this is the perfect time because I don't want to strengthen the other dynasties, of course. So I think this needs to be the very first card we are playing. So I think mobilize, invade goes on top. And I think up next we are playing a tax card, which gives them a child. But again, if you would do it the other way around, we would already make them a sword master which we are not going to do so tax goes on the bottom and this card goes on top all the other players and this is really what i do like we are not caring about whatever making any choice we are simply flipping over the topmost card and says what the tactics cards or the tactics rules tell us to do so now this was basically the plot phase up next we are moving into the turns phase which says play two turns and then the turn is outlined here each player and play all the rewards of the two action cards chosen during block blah 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 we are going through that in a second now again we are still the starting player so we are flipping over the top most card it's a mobilize and invade for mobilize action we don't have to go through any trade checks whatsoever for invade yes there is something which is there are critical trade check for mobilize we can simply do that and we can mobilize all of our territories the thing is during the upkeep phase later this um, round basically 
we have to pay one gold for that. So we have to be a little bit careful. So let's not go too crazy on things. Um, and the event is something we would deal later on. But again, we have already um, yeah, made up our mind. We already know what's coming. One of the next player's children develops unusual skill at sword play. We can basically ignore that, which is huge. So perfect timing. And I think we definitely do want to mobilize. What is it? Saxony here. So we are playing one, placing one of our foot soldiers in here. And I think we may want to do the same in Bohemia right now. All the others, I think we do not care too much right now. Um, because yeah, maybe through Hungary here, someone could up here, but there is still a buffer zone um, called Hungary. So I think let's let's leave it at that. Right now we don't have to pay for those soldiers. This is something that will come later. And that basically at the very end, that so after we have the possibility to pay for those, we can then still pretty much put them back without any ill effects whatsoever. But that was our very first action. And again, we have already triggered the event. Again, we have no other children. No, no player has children yet on the board. So we are moving over to Italy. And I should check for those development cards here. So they have a steward, gives you an extra token, draw when you build. Okay, let's not forget that. And the longbow gives you an extra token, draw when you invade. So that's really massive, of course, but they are the ferocious Ferox player or so they're really driving hard. So let's see what their first card is for this round. And that's a plot overthrow. So let's deal with that first. And again, I will only show that to you once. So first of all, they would try to overthrow a territory that is unrest. Right now, there is no unrest in any of the territories, so we can ignore that, obviously. Manufacturer casts a spell against an adjacent player. I think they mean really a player who has a territory adjacent. That's at least how I think. Murder a child on the board with a green trait of the player who's the fewest heirs, or it's really aggressive, or murder the king on the board, which is um, something that you can't do anyway in the first round of the game. Is it? I think the first round of the game that it's not allowed to murder a foreign king. So in this case, we will simply go for a manufacturer castle spell in an adjacent player. Again, that's Italy. So in this case, the only, oh no, it's actually not, um, is it? Oh, I know, I think it is. Yeah, I know. This is not directly adjacent here. And I think in this case, it can't, it can be only France being adjacent. I really hope that I understand the adjacency here so that we're not talking about myself or the France player. But again, in this case, here we have a territory right next to Italy, um, which is basically Toulouse. So I think think that would be the cars of Spelly they are aiming for. At least that's my take. So let's have a look. Um, that's basically the plot event. And we are going for manufacture castle spelly against a rival dynasty required to invade. And that's where we really need to be clear. Very similar to the computer game, you cannot willy nilly invade everyone. You have to first whatever get, um, yeah, basically you have to manufacture a castle spell. Basically a reason why you are invading that country because it is, you say, it's mine, I should have been and whatever you can. You can really manufacture a lot of things in this case, but this is something that you have to do in, before you are really going into that. If the Italian player is now failing on their plot check, the other player would gain in castle space. So this is then revealed and then say, hey, you try to do this and that. And basically they have a castle spell against them. So we are going for a plot check here, an intrigue check. And the critical traits are honest. So if you're drawing an honest token out, you are failing. If you're drawing a deceitful one, you are basically successful in this case. Again, they get one extra trade token. I could also say, oh, I don't want this to happen, actually. I could still pay my two gold to whatever reduced it down by one. But in this case, yeah, let them fight each other. I'm totally fine with that. So we are drawing up to two tokens of the back end. And they never pay extra cash here. I think for this one, I think the... I think the blue player can do that, right? Gives you an extra draw when you attempt to many. They, the blue player, on the other hand, they would be allowed to get an extra draw. So they would draw three tokens out of the back. Wow, that's huge. So that's the first one. Uh, yeah, that's already a win. He's brave, so brave that he was successfully able to manufacture that castle's belly, which means they're taking one of those tokens in here. 
and we are putting um, all the war things here on the right hand side. Again, on the main player board, you have spaces for all of the other players here. If you are in a pack in the castle spelly or even at war. But in this case, again, table space is tight. And I will also write it down so that I don't forget. But in this case, again, Italy was successful. So in theory, they could now start to invade the France player. No, that's mean. Let's have a look at the event which you're triggering afterwards. Okay, it's self. Ambitious cousin requires child. Okay, they don't have a child, so we can also ignore that. But let's have a look. Your heir to the throne is influenced by a young and headstrong cousin. The child gets the ambitious trait in addition to any other traits. Again, could be good and bad, but in this case, again, we can simply ignore this event. This is um, pretty much discarded, put back to the bottom of the respective deck. And then it typically gets reshuffled. I think in a four player game, maybe not, but yeah, it's discarded. Up next, it's France. Mm, they have again the Chancellor and yeah, when they build. Okay, let's see what action they are taking. We are drawing the topmost card from their respective deck and that's the build and develop. And I think we have to look at this already. So um, I have to check what they are doing with the build and develop. And yeah, obviously they're the builder. They will buy two development cards unless Postis has already six. No, they have two and there are no real distinct rules on what they are aiming for the development card. So I have to make an informed the bank wouldn't help them basically because again they're, they're not going after money so I think in this case they will simply go for the plate armor and for the archbishop allows to perform the crusade action twice per era yeah also not really extremely helpful but they will go for those two cards anyway okay they're not paying for any of those things they have unlimited amount of money give or take that's the end of their action which means we are revealing two more that's the library and the marshal. I will have a look at those once it's really relevant. But then we have to deal with the event down here. A fire rages through one of your castles. You determine which. Okay, they don't have... Oh, it's oh, it's France. They do have a castle, in fact. Yeah, in this case, there is no real choice, actually. It's Paris. <laughs> the member of your royal family with the highest card number, not the king, sadly dies in the inferno. Wow, that's so brutal. Wow, what a, what a setback. I don't really know what this means, why you have to pick the castle, because again, it doesn't say that the castle really is destroyed. What will happen though is that he is losing his lovely wife, Jehan. Oh wow, that's so brutal. So he's not going to have a child this Era. No, yeah, he can't still marry. We still have another round. No, 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 that's fine. No, I think we are still okay. Wow, wow that's really, really, that's, that's really a tough start for France here. Wow, okay, and he was the only player who actually had a castle. Oof, that's really, <laughs> wow, that's very punishing. But I almost forgot one thing I forgot. He is the inventor now. Um, because he has four of those development cards. So the next player to get five um, would take it away from them, but that's already a solid victory point. So he's very much in the lead with six points, five from his territories and five from the inventor card. Um, you might ask yourself, hey, but when I'm at six, what happens then? There are ways how you can uh, bribe the counselors, for example, away from them through also one of those plot actions. Something that we do definitely do have to consider. And when you are falling below the four, by the way, you also have to give it back. Okay, and then it's Iberia. So let's see the spy master and side unrest or overthrow that do not border your own. Okay, understood. And the plate armor, yeah, that's we already know this one. This is really great if someone invades a territory where you have mobilized an army in there, or basically an army in there, they have to go for an extra success, which can be huge, of course. Here we, oh, they are starting right off with their crusade. Wow, kind or cruel are the critical traits here. So they are basically trying to make it here to Constantinople already, which would give them one extra crusade card at the start of a new era. Again, for them, I'm not so sure if that's really crucial for us. Maybe so if you have the Archbishop card, like for example, France, getting an extra possibility and more choices on which crusades which crusade card to play that can be huge in a, in a multiplayer game that is for the solo mode for the eyes not so sure about this but okay it's the yellow player so we are drawing two chits out of black now i have to make a choice do i want to pay something now to counter this or not 
do I want them to be successful here or not? Or do I say I don't care? Maybe I don't because I think I would fancy Antioch here rather. So I would actually have him be successful here and then maybe myself will go for a crusade card next to get Antioch. That's pretty cool. Getting one extra realm intrigue or war card at the start of era can be really huge. Gives you simply more choices, right? Okay, so let's let's have him succeed. So we are drawing one token that's lustful. That doesn't help you with a crusade quite obviously. So they're drawing one more. And yeah, okay, yeah, because He's the sword master, he is successful. Which means he has made it here to Constantinople, which is good. So they gain this one here, extra card. I'm not even sure if I do that for the Iron Lord. I will do that now because again, there's nothing written that they're not doing this. But of course we are adding the ignorant token now into the trade back here. So if I would have paid, maybe, 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 um, they would have been not successful. And then again, you have to assign who you are sending to the crusade and this would have been the king. So he would have gone through a succession crisis right away, which I think getting this early on in the game would be terrible. I think this is typically not the first thing that you are doing in an era, um, going for a crusade, because again, you want to make sure you have a male heir who you could send out um, other than your king, of course. But of course, let's not forget the um, event. And for those crusade cards, they are, I think, either self or um, other, but um, here it's the other way around. So self is good in this case, you're getting something good. And all if this would say other, other players would be punished. And all, all of the other cards, it's the other way around. So the self is typically not a great thing. The other is to, typically is. So in this case, Crusader Knights bring back valuable relics from the whole land, take to gold. Again, they do not care about gold which in this case means we are simply ignoring this card, but at least he is already out on the map on the crusade track. Okay, but yeah, one thing we shouldn't forget actually is um, because they were successful in the crusade, they are getting the first player token. And I think you're playing the current turn to the end, or is it the complete round? Let me check that. And yes, indeed, um, this will immediately change. This was the last turn of the, f oh, basically the, Last turn of the first two turn, ah, we, you get the idea. They're first now for the second turn of this round, which means they are going first and then it's, we are at least second. So that's not really the end of the world. So we're drawing the next card here and that's a plot overthrow and they have a royal coup. Require sibling or child. So we already know we can ignore that. Maybe I shouldn't read those when they are not triggering. And this is self. Self is always yourself. So no one other can be affected by this. But of course we have to check the plot overthrow event. So let's see. Overthrow a territory that is in unrest. No. Murder a child? No, we don't have any children on the board. Murder the king? No, we can't do that during the first round of the game. I checked that. It's not the first turn, it's the first round. Who has the fused heirs? Inside unrest. I think this is what they are going to do. Or manufacture castle spell against. But I think they can incite unrest, which they could then use later on, or maybe another player to whatever, do terrible stuff. And again, looking at the board, it's unfortunately France. And you have to do that to an adjacent territory that you control. Right now, it's Navarra against Aquitaine, which means we are going for an unrest here in Aquitaine. I have to check, is that an auto success or not? I think not. It's still, no, I think it's still a plot event. Right, 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 right. No, 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 we have to do that. It's honest or deceitful, so let's make the trade draw accordingly. Again, they're getting one more here. Again, I couldn't care less, quite honestly, if fact we take. That's really, you already start to see that, is that being France can be really brutal, actually. And I think in this case, it was wise for me not to play France. So here's the first draw, and yeah, Swordmaster, it doesn't really matter. It's a green trade, which in this case means it was successful. So we are placing an unrest marker in here, which is something now someone else could now overthrow this territory. Mm, okay, maybe, okay, mm, here's the thing now. Mm, let me let me check that. So I see. Allow you to incite, that's a spy master they have, um, that do not border your own. Also gives you an extra traitor on murder and bribe. Okay, now that's not what they're doing. But in this case, would they have gone for this one? 
Yeah, I think it's still adjacent to them. They could have decided to go for the castle one here, for example, but I think that's that's more difficult there, actually. You know, I think this does make sense for the Iberian play. And this is basically one of the golden rules where it says, um, make the best judgment, actually. And I think in this case, I would have used this one just to prepare myself. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. But okay then, now it's us. And oh, wow, well, really the problem is we didn't get a child, right? Yeah, and we can basically um, forget this event here because require sibling or child. So uh, we already clarified this, right? So we are playing our tax card, which means we are getting one gold for each country we are controlling. We are controlling four territories, so we are getting four money for that. So that's not too bad. And then we are going for the a child is born, a healthy child is born to the king of the next player. That player draws a random character card from his culture and a random trade token for a child. A king can never have more than three, but so on. Doesn't really matter. It's Italy. So let's see who they give birth to. And that's Roberto. Pretty bearded child, it seems. But okay. <laughs> you can immediately start using those, by the way. So if they would now go for a crusade action, for example, they would send Roberto in. And oh, wow. He's temperate. Um, this token now stays here for now. It doesn't really make a full impact on the dynasty just yet. Only when he would then become king would we then add the token to the trade back. But that's already our card and our event, so we can um, discard it, which also means we can move over directly to Italy, who is next. So let's draw the next card from that card. And it is the Crusade action. And yeah, you might wonder now, hmm, does it make sense? Is this child already old enough to be sent to the Crusade? In the sake of the rules, yes, he is. So he's sending Roberto out to the crusade. So he could die, but this would at least not lead to succession crisis, which again would be very, very brutal here. And I think if France is now going for a war event, uh, this, this really will be, I think they will lose half of their territories or so. This is brutal. But yeah, let's see. Ah, but mm, that's also a bummer because we wanted to go to Antioch. But okay, let's see. Now we can check. Oh, do we want to pay now? to make this unsuccessful, and I think we do. So in this case, we are paying to money and you can gang up on these things. So if you are in a multiplayer game and you agree you only have one coin, or you only want to spend one coin, um, you can gang up and say whatever, or you want to deny them two extra draws, for example, you can also do that twice actually and, and gang up and one is paying two, the other one is playing two, or maybe you mix, you, you're sharing all together around the table, that's all fine. But okay, which means they only get one trade token now to make it to Antioch, so uh, Roberto could actually die. And, oop, ah, and he's so clever, he made it to Antioch. Okay, that's kind of a bummer, but now we are adding this deceitful token to the trade back here as well. So it's getting more spices as we go. We are adding the next um, character sheet in here. We must not forget that they're getting extra cards from this. And then we have to check for the event. Divine Invasion. The church is pleased. Oh, it's a self card. The church is pleased with your progress in the Holy Land and blesses your next invade action. You get one extra trade draw on your next invade action. Place this card in your trade, in your trade bag as a reminder. Yeah, let's... Mm. Okay, that's a fair point. And I think I will actually do that. But it's only for the invade action, right? Yeah, it's really only for the invade action. So hopefully I will not forget it that it's here, but I should feel it. And this is what I really like about this board game. These events are so extremely stringy. They can completely mess up everything. But again, you have typically some choices. You have eight cards in your hand. You play six of those. If you are making it here to some of those, you make yourself or giving yourself more opportunities to gain more cards. So you always have to balance things out a little bit. Here is the perfect action I want to take, but it comes with a terrible event. So let's not do that just yet. Or you can time it. So you can somewhat mitigate some of the brutality on some of those cards. But I really, really very much enjoy this game as a multiplayer game. And so far, I must say, I also enjoy this for the solo experience, quite honestly. Let's move over to France or the House of Capet. And yeah, this is brutal, actually. They have so many of those cards. I mean, this is really nice. <laughs> they will also go for the crusade action. So how mean am I going to be? 
because here I could really drive it down quite significantly. Again, spending now two more monies. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, and he would gain, uh, he requires a spouse and he doesn't have a spouse. Oh, that's so bad for him. Poor Louis the Nine. Oh boy. And here I really do think I'm not going to pay because if I do and he is dying, so there is a success in Christ. I think he's drawing then a random character, but again, terrible things happen to your lands here. Um, yeah, he, I would definitely get rid of one of those opponents. I think that's already a good thing, but I guess I would also make lives too easy for Italy and Spain as well. So I think I will not do that. And I'm not, I'm the only one who's spending the money on this just to make also their lives easier. I don't think so. I really don't think so. Let, let's have him go after Edessa or is it Odessa? I don't know. And yeah, let's see how things go. He's the blue character, so he gets two draws and he could get ambitious. And yeah, I don't really know how attractiveness could help you here. <laughs> I'm pretty sure someone can come up with a cool story. <laughs> I don't know, he's so attractive and handsome. He's yeah, convincing all sorts of, let's say, yeah, foreign countries. So he's making friends and pacts in there. So it's really hard for, for, for the others to take him down. And yeah, because he's so popular, he makes it to a death. <laughs> <laughs> he's now getting ambitious for that. Um, but okay, this also means um, they all have made a crusade and you have to make one crusade attempt per year. It's really only one, unless again you have the archbishop, then you can do it uh, more than once. But in this case, wow, they're really, really marching towards Jerusalem here. I mean, wow, that's really, oof, that's, that's something. Oof, okay, amazing. Um, yeah, again, these are nine, and then this is the last one here, exactly. The Kingdom of Jerusalem. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, and I think we already figured that the childbirth, unfortunately, is not going to happen for him. A healthy child is born, draw a random card. Wow, yeah, that's really bad for um, him. Otherwise, he would have gotten himself a child, which is typically really a great thing. But yeah, I think that's life. Uh, during the next round, he will definitely try to find another spouse for his king. But okay, this was the very first round of the very first era. Again, we are playing three rounds and we are playing three eras. Now we are moving into the upkeep phase. Pay one gold for each of your foot soldiers on the game board. Then demobilize any foot soldiers you want. Add one H token to your king. So um, what does this mean? First of all, I have to pay two of, and this is now really bad. I didn't think this one through. So I have to pay two gold now, so one for each of those territories. If I don't want to spend the money, that's fine, but then we are adding an unrest in these ter territories. So I think I don't want unrest in my territories just now. So I'm paying those two. The, and this is really where I played this completely incorrectly now, or not, not rules-wise, but tactics-wise, because I don't have any more war cards in my deck, right? No, I don't. That was really a bummer. So I really have to start thinking now, do I want, I think I want to hold on to this one here because I'm still adjacent here. But again, for each end of the round, I have to do that once more. So maybe, 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 yeah, this was really poor planning. I was kind of worried that they are going to uh, invade me or so. That was my thinking here, but I think I will now demobilize at least this one. I can do that now without any penalty because I've already paid them. So we are not seeing any unrest. And I think this one here for now, I will leave. I have to pay one coin each round now two more times actually in this era mm, yeah that was really poor 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 but okay that's that and then last but not least we are adding an H token to each of the kings on the board only to the kings not to the children not to the spouses not to the siblings uh, just to the king I think if you get the third one you get an extra green trait of your choice and I think with the fourth one you are dead or so I have to really check that now but for now it's one, so we are still okay. There are events which will give you more H tokens. There are also events which reduce H tokens. So a lot of things can happen in this game. But again, for now, each of the kings have aged a little bit. And yeah, I think they could come closer to um, being wise at some point in time, unless they are dead. <laughs> 
But okay, I think these were the crusade actions for the other place anyway, so the risk is now relatively low actually. But this means we are now moving into the second round of the first era, but I think I will stop my playthrough for today. Mm, first of all, it was a relatively long episode already and I think I have, I'm playing things relatively slowly now. Again, I have to do a lot of reading in between turns, especially in respect to rules and how to prioritize things. I haven't played this game at least, I think, two years now, last time I played it. And second, if someone knows the solo rules mm, and spots one or two mistakes or 10 or 12, I don't know, then let me know and I can make at least some corrections during my next video. So if I'm now playing too far ahead, basically through the full era, then I've already lost a good amount of opportunities to repair stuff. Now I still, after the first round, it's still okay. I can, I don't know, try to repair stuff, punish myself or give other players a little bit more of a benefit or whatever it is. So basically give you some opportunity to correct me where I was wrong and also would appreciate any sort of suggestions. You see already how I'm making very stupid mistakes in respect to my strategy. This was really terrible. Uh, let, let me show you this. I really should have shuffled two of those um, war cards, not shuffled, but taken two of those uh, war cards into my hand. One is okay if you really want to just build up your defenses, but if you really do want to do stuff, you need a second. Well, that's already me. Again, not sure if I will see a lot of combat in this very first era now, but things are now already changing. The trade backs have changed quite a bit for a lot of these players who really curious to see how things go and yeah let me know what you think about this game about my playthrough also a huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members out there you guys are really amazing can't tell you how much appreciate your support so you can support me on patreon you can join me here on youtube you can click the little thanks button would really appreciate that like and subscribe leave a comment this also greatly helps of course and yeah with that being said hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and until then Bye-bye.